Huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now in today's episode, we're going to be traveling back to the year 2010 and talking about the Google Chromebook. Now, I know that some of you guys have uh, mixed feelings about Chromebooks. In fact, on the last video that I did talking about Chrome OS, I got some pretty hilarious comments from you guys. But uh, however you feel about Chromebooks, you can't deny that they've definitely made an impact in the world of computing, especially in the education sector where they are extremely popular. But this week is pretty significant in the realm of Chromebooks and Chrome OS as 10 years ago this week, the first commercially available Chromebooks went on sale. Now, Google had originally partnered with two hardware vendors to create Chromebooks, Samsung and Acer. However, the Acer model got delayed and wasn't released uh, until about a month after now, there were two Samsung models, both of them had a 12.1 inch screen, but one of them had 3G connectivity built in, so it was kind of like an, a nice extra feature, certainly for a laptop that you'd be traveling around with. But today we're not talking about any of those Chromebooks, because we're talking about the very first Chromebook. Now, to clear up any confusion, those models by Samsung and Acer were the first to be publicly released and available to consumers, but they were not the very first Chromebook. That's because back in December of 2010, Google launched a little something called the Chrome OS Pilot Program. Now, Chrome OS had been around since the summer of 2009, but this was the very first time that Google made hardware available, but it was in a very, very limited sense. You had to apply online to this pilot program, and if you were accepted, Google would send you kind of like a reference model that had similar specifications to what was going to be released by Acer and Samsung. In return, Google wanted you to provide feedback. They wanted you to use this device daily and test it out and see how Chrome OS worked and provide feedback to them. And that's really all you had to do. You just had to be uh, one of the lucky ones to get accepted. And I remember applying for this program back then. And unfortunately, I didn't get in and I did not get one of these Chromebooks. But that all changes today because right here in this box, I have got one of them. This right here is a Google CR48, which is the official name of the very first Chromebook. Now it gets its name from Chromium 48, which is an isotope of Chromium. And uh, this box has everything in it, which I think is super cool because what we're gonna be doing is reliving the unboxing experience and we'll be taking a look at this thing and, and seeing what the Chrome OS pilot program was like back in 2010 when these things were produced. And first off, I gotta say, check out this box. I mean, this is a pretty cool looking box. It doesn't say Google anywhere on it. In fact, even on like the bottom right here, it doesn't say anything about Google. There's nothing that identifies this as a Chromebook. So without any further ado, let's open it up and see what you would get if you're one of the lucky ones to be accepted into the Chrome OS pilot program. So inside the box, you've got uh, down here your power adapter. So we're gonna take this out here and set it aside. And we've got this piece of cardboard to remove and underneath that we've got the battery which says Mario on it and you might be wondering why on earth that is. Well, that's because this uh, was the code name for this device. Now again, the official name was the CR48 but uh, Google referred to it as the Mario in development which I think is pretty neat. And here is the CR48 or the Mario itself. So we'll take this out and set it aside. Before we get to the laptop itself, we've got a couple of uh, pieces of documentation to go through here so we'll take these out and that is everything in the box guys so we're going to set the box aside the specifications for those wondering this machine has an intel atom n455 cpu that is evident by the fact that you've got this intel card in here if you crack this open you'd find intel so they gotta make sure you know that this has an intel processor inside it's got two gigs of ram a 12.1 inch screen with a resolution of 1280 by 800 and a 16 gigabyte ssd and like i said earlier because the cr48 is a reference model, these specifications are almost identical to what you saw in the two Samsung models that were released in June of 2011. So those are the specifications. You've got this pamphlet right here that says don't panic, which I love anything that <laughs> starts off with don't panic. Read this paper, then recycle it. Well, the last person didn't follow that part of the instructions or make it into a super cool paper airplane that you can give to your nephew. Don't you love that Google humor? Safety notices. This is the usual yada yada, just more fun. And it tells you 
you, you know, this product contains sensitive components. Don't drop, disassemble, open, crush, bend, bake, deform, puncture. They actually put blend. Guess we'll never know if it'll blend. Oh my gosh, I did not see that before. That is hilarious. That's obviously a, a reference to the Does It Blend YouTube channel uh, from Blend Tech. Oh man, that is, that's hilarious. Okay, shred, incinerate, paint, bring to the moon, or insert foreign objects into the device. Do not spill liquids, rocks of any size, or food on the device. Do not expose the device to water, moisture, <laughs> rap music. So I guess whoever wrote this doesn't really like rap music. This product does not contain any user serviceable parts. Repairs should only be made by an authorized technician. Note that authorized technicians do not necessarily include your neighborhood 15 year old brainiac that you can call anytime you get an antivirus pop up on your computer. Note, you shouldn't see antivirus problems on this device anyway. Battery, this device includes a lithium ion battery as that whole cold fusion thing hasn't been figured out yet. Install the battery as indicated in the figure. I drew it myself. I think I'm going into art after being a copy editor. Then connect the power cable as indicated. The battery is not fully charged, but like most things in life with some work, you can change that. So please, please connect the power cable and fully charge the battery before using the device for the first time. When opening or closing the display panel, place one hand on the palm rest to hold the device in place and use the other hand to slowly open or close the display panel. You can try opening the display panel with one hand, but that goes into extreme display opening and maybe frowned upon by someone special in your life. Do not use excessive force when opening or closing the display panel, or we may ask you to take an anger management class. Be careful not to open the display panel too far, as this could put stress, physical and emotional, on the display panel's hinges and cause damage. Okay, so that took an unexpected turn there, but I found some of this stuff pretty, pretty hilarious. So, there you go. Uh, that's your little uh, basic kind of quick start guide. But what you have here is uh, a graphic that tells you about the controls and the various components and where they are on the machine. So you've got microphone, camera, the search key. Now, what was interesting is they completely or not completely, but they, they changed the design of the keyboard. Now, obviously, Chromebooks today are, are essentially all like this, but they had taken away the caps lock key and put the search key in its place. Uh, so there is no caps lock key anymore. And check out this giant touchpad, man. Yeah, this definitely back in 2011, the, the phrase giant touchpad had a completely different meaning because this is certainly, and as you're going to see, this is not a giant touchpad in today's standards. What they also did is they replaced the function keys or the F key. So there's no F1 to F12. And again, this is all like standard on Chromebooks today. But you know, back then, Chromebooks were literally brand new. So it was kind of odd to see a laptop without a caps lock key and function keys. But this is certainly not a traditional laptop, as I'm sure we all know. Uh, get on the web, you know, it tells you how to do that. Press the power button, some things we like. To keep up with the latest news, get help or participate in our private community, visit google.com slash chrome os. There you go, that's your little uh, reading entertainment for, for, for this video, so we'll set that aside. And we're gonna take the CR48 out of its protective cardboard things. So we'll put, we'll put those aside. What's interesting about this, is this laptop, you can see, doesn't have any markings of any kind. There's no branding, there's no Chrome OS logo, there's no Google logo. It's just a black laptop. We'll flip it over to the back here. Uh, the only real indication you have of anything is down here inside the battery compartment. And it's the same story with the battery, which I've already removed from its plastic wrap. The only identifying piece of information is the code name, which is again Mario, but you just have your regulatory info the rating, all that stuff, but nothing about Google, nothing about Chrome OS, very, very basic. So we're gonna install the battery into the CR48. There it is, and we'll flip it over, and we'll uh, open it up and turn this machine on. So uh, the hinge here, you saw the uh, manual was mentioning uh, to be, oh, it's turning on, by the way. Now, unfortunately, something that I noticed with this machine is the hinge is kind of broken. I mean, it still works, but once you open up the machine and you go to close it, watch what happens. Yeah, you can see how it's not even here. So the top panel is kind of shifted and it's like off on an angle now. And here is that giant touchpad. Check it out, everybody. 
And uh, yes, here is the keyboard. So if you've never owned a Chrome OS device before, here's what the keyboard looks like. And uh, yeah, so again, no caps lock key. There's no Windows key, obviously. This isn't a Windows machine, so you just have a giant control and alt key over here, a more standard size alt key right here, a small control key. You've got this annoying arrow key layout that is still present on laptops today, even my laptop, and I am not a fan of these because these freaking the up and down arrow keys are like cut in half. Yeah, that's really all there is to say other than check out the giant touchpad, man. So yeah, that's... Uh, that's that, but yeah, I'm gonna readjust the camera and we'll take a look at the software on here. Before we jump into that though, I wanna give a huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for making the purchase of this machine possible. If you're not already familiar with Skillshare, they're an online learning community with thousands of classes on just about anything. Video editing, programming, time management, you name it. Perhaps you wanna be the guy who writes that hilarious don't panic pamphlet that we talked about earlier. Well, there's a class from Jesse Forrest that's all about about copywriting for beginners that may interest you. The great thing about Skillshare is it's specifically tailored to learning. Every class is broken up into multiple lessons to give you a natural stopping point when you're done for the day. And you don't have to worry about any ads, as every premium class doesn't have any. Plus, Skillshare is adding new classes to their collection all the time, and their premium membership gives you access to all of them. Today, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people to click the link down below a free one-month trial of premium. And if you decide to continue your membership afterwards, it costs less than $10 a month if billed annually. So be sure to check it out. And huge thanks again to Skillshare for supporting the channel. All right, so as with any Chrome OS device, the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is connect to the internet. Uh, for some reason, the default language is Canadian English, so we're just going to leave it at that. That's fine. And we're going to choose our Wi-Fi network here. And there we go. So we have to agree to the terms. And I should mention, this is not the original version of the Chrome OS operating system that was on here. Uh, this obviously shipped with, you know, a, a pretty early version of the OS. But uh, Google's end of life policy for Chromebooks specified that each device gets support for five years after it's initially released. So that means that this Chromebook was entitled to operating system updates and patches and everything until December of 2015. But what's interesting is that didn't necessarily mean that Google was going to kill off support for the machine in December of 2015. It just meant that people were no longer entitled to receive OS updates on these machines anymore, but Google could still choose to support them if they wanted to. In fact, in an article from OMG Chrome that was posted on June 17th, 2016, they reported that the CR48 was still receiving updates from Google, even though it had been more than five years since the device was released, quote unquote. I mean, again, it was only made available in a very limited sense. So uh, it was still receiving updates back then, but uh, they reported that uh, the updates will end shortly. So we're going to see if this is running the latest version of Chrome OS that it officially supports. So I have to sign into my Google account here. Actually, I guess I can just do browse as a guest. We'll just do that. And there we go. Check it out. You're browsing as a guest. So here we are in this, uh, let's just go to the about information right now. Okay, so this is uh, Google Chrome version 56.0. This is, uh, so this gives us the Chrome version, the Google Chrome version. Interesting, copyright 2021. That's that's probably being pulled from somewhere. Chrome OS version 56. Okay, so it's just the same version number as the browser. And here it says right here, security updates for this device are no longer available. Please consider upgrading. So, Chrome version 56, this release is actually from early 2017, which is uh, quite amazing. Now, it's obvious that using a version of Google Chrome and Chrome OS from 2017 isn't really the best thing to do, right? But there's nothing stopping us from installing a Linux distro on here. I mean, obviously Chrome OS is based off of Linux, but we could install a more modern, lightweight Linux distro on here and, uh, you know, one that still pushes out security updates, right? That that supports uh, the, the specifications that we have in this computer. So we can close out of Chrome there and we can take a look at what we've got. Uh, so I don't think I've used this specific version of Chrome OS, but you can see back then, this little menu down here would open up this Google search interface here. 
And then you can click from here. You got files, get help, Chrome, and this is how you get to all apps down here. Actually, I would assume, let, let me just log in to, uh, to a Google account because I don't know if it gives you access to everything when you're logged into a guest account here. So we'll exit out here. Okay, so we're signing into a secondary Google account of mine. And okay, now we get some options to pick a user profile picture. So we'll pick, uh, let's pick the frog here. Why not? Okay, so now we're kind of getting some more uh, action going on here. So it says, howdy, welcome to the Chrome family. This is no ordinary computer. This Chrome device was designed to deliver the best experience of the web to you. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll close out of that there. And you saw that pop up down here. These will happen pretty frequently because obviously they want to warn you that this device is out of date. Actually, you can just click don't remind me again, I guess. So there you go. Let's go into the apps menu now and see what we got. I don't think the web store was here before, though. I don't think you could install Chrome extensions when you were in guest mode. We can open up the web store here. I'm actually curious if uh, if we do because Chrome OS uh, has the ability to install Linux applications, but you have to enable it. And I wonder if that was a feature in this version here. They kind of write it as if Linux is like a feature. I mean, the entire OS is based off Linux. That's what allows this to, uh, you know, to be able to run Linux applications, right? So it's under uh, settings, advanced developers. Now I wonder if that's advanced. Well, I don't see a, I'm just gonna do a search for developer. No matches were found. Okay, actually, yeah, we can check which devices have Linux. So on the official uh, documentation here for the Chromium project, you see under Google, and this is again listed by manufacturer. And you see it's not listed under here, so this doesn't even uh, officially support this feature. Uh, and if I even do a search for CR48, nothing will come up, so yeah. There you go, if you were curious about that. We can certainly watch YouTube videos with this version of Chrome. And it's playing right now, but the video hasn't completely <laughs> loaded yet. Yeah, so it's a little laggy, but it's, uh, it's certainly doable if it wants to open up in full screen here. There we go. Oh, I guess I, I, guess I paused it. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it is playing back. I don't really see any, any frames dropping at all, though we do have this notification up here. Uh, yeah, by the way, if you guys never saw my Steve Jobs pizza delivery video, this is a very, very interesting story. Cyber Slice, super, super interesting story. I have it as my channel trailer. If you're, if you happen to not be subscribed, uh, I'd, I'd highly recommend checking it out. But yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to say guys that is the google cr48 over 10 years later and uh yeah i was really excited to actually acquire this machine it's something that i wanted really ever since i applied for that pilot program but again didn't get in hey if there's any of you guys watching that got one of these back in 2010 and were able to use it back then be sure to share down below what your experience was like i'd be really interested in hearing about that but that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Uh, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I will see you all in the next video.